And welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for some Vladimir Hecarim, our first deck of the day. We're going to be playing some decks that we've played before today, we're playing all uh, pretty fun decks that it's been a little bit since we've played any of them. We only played this deck one time, Vladimir Hecarim, but it was really impressive. I remember that. Um, we went, I remember we went four and one and it was looking good. We do have a different, more aggressive metagame now. And Curse Keeper now only makes four threes instead of four fours, so that's a bummer. Uh, so we'll kind of see how this deck still does. We've been talking about it here before hitting the record button of like potentially anything to change, like if we need to switch up any removal spells or anything. But I'm going to kind of keep it as is. There's lots of Brahms running around, so we got two calling strikes for that. Maybe we need a third uh, moving forward. Um, I like how Crimson Awakener can block Basilisk Rider for us, so that's pretty nice. But yeah, our, our deck's really built around these two champions. Um, both these champions work pretty well together. So like Vladimir, you want to go wide with Vladimir, right? Because you, you want to have a bunch of attacking allies that you can deal one to each one and therefore one to the enemy nexus. And probably the easiest way to go wide is with Hecarim, because you play Hecarim and you're attacking with three things right away so that gives you you know a bunch of vladimir targets and especially the spectral riders you just don't even really mind them dying and uh and, you know it's so, like it doesn't matter they're really dealing one damage to them but yeah those two those two uh champions are both awesome and then uh we have rekindler that can bring back those champions which is even better but then boom harrowing uh is really our our uh, late game card. This card is super strong with Vladimir and Hecarim. Both of those cards um, are really good with Hec with Harrowing. Like they let you go wide for Vladimir. They give you a bunch of ephem ephemerals to level up with Hecarim. It's pretty awesome. So that's kind of like what our deck's about. And then we got like a bunch of control elements with a bunch of removal. Um, as far as mulliganing, we want to find Crimson Disciple, the best card in our deck in our opening hand. We want turn two Crimson Disciple every game. We're going to be mulliganing hard for that card, and kind of same with Crimson Curator. Those are the two most important cards to look for. Keeper can be okay. There's lots of ways for us to easily kill Keeper, whether it's Demolitionist or Transfusion or the Crimson Awakener or just like Vladimir Trigger. Um, you know, we can... You know, we can use removal on our own things, too. There's obviously Glimpse Beyond, too. So, like, we have a lot of ways to kill our own Curse Keeper and then make a 4-3. Um, yeah, that's that's our deck. So, here we go. Vladimir Hecarim. All right, I am now in Diamond. Got out of Platinum yesterday uh, with the Rank Up Day. Had a lot of good videos yesterday. I was real, real happy with every deck we played yesterday. I played a Noxus aggro deck, if you want to check that one out. Um, kind of similar to what my opponent's doing over here, but uh, I played it with Freljord, and I, I am 100% in the camp that Noxus Freljord is better than Noxus Shadow Isles. Shadow Isles splashes for Elise and Harrowing. That's what uh, people let me know in the comments they're playing Harrowing. What's up, Alfredo? Which I am... Um, kind of appalled by <laughs> harrowing in this deck for how aggressive they should be. I'll try uh, you know, let's talk about a card I would you would never ever ever want in your in your hand. It's just like if your opponent stabilizes and it's the late game and then you draw a harrowing, then if all of those things happen, then you're then you're really happy. You can do. Yeah, I, I'm not a fan of that. The Freljord version that I like a lot more, the two Freljord cards I splash for are Omenhawk, because that card's amazing. I don't know if y'all have heard, that, heard of that card before. But it's also a one drop, and it's perfect. So that card, and... Um, hmm... Delicious. Uh, that card in Fury of the North. That was not the block I wanted them to do. I was hoping they would block the other way. Honestly. That was the good block against Transfusion. Mm -hmm. 
I'll try anyone. So maybe I should have just cast transfusion. Would have killed the one. Yeah, I, sh I should have just cast transfusion before last turn. That was that was a mistake by me not not casting the transfusion. Yeah, it definitely was. Basically, what it would have done is I I I would have had a two health crimson disciple for casting transfusion. good hand for them starting well uh you know turn two crimson disciple turn three crimson disciple plus one drop turn four crimson disciple plus legion and grenadier Are they out out discipled me GG's. Sure about that? Nope. <laughs> awesome, Cabo. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for watching all the YouTube videos from yesterday. Double Demolitionist after triple Crimson Disciple. Pretty awesome. GG's. So we basically need, you know, like, we're, we're a lot slower deck. We need to be able to have the game go a lot longer than turn five. Um, that's tough to do against those specific cards that my opponent had. So, same deck now splashing for Teemo, huh? That makes sense. It's possible our like it's possible this deck's too slow in in this Noxus metagame with with all these Noxus aggro decks around now. Of course I'm ready. Certainly a possibility. Don't really see that block being worth it. I found my family. My Shadow Isles does have access to life gain removal, so that is something that we could potentially play. Kind of thing of grass the undying. Our opponents are curving out well, though. Double spelling we ride for Noxus. on these turns. Come, Clara, we have much to teach you. I can't wait. The Come here, darling. All right, this is my way to. This is my best block of taking the least amount of damage. I'm still taking a lot. But this is my best block. Okay, well, we're at 11. 
it's not too bad, all things considered. You guys know how to outplay? Just go face. True. All right, let's put some down to f nine. Good transfusion, my Crimson Disciple. Man, wow! Talk about a non-patient opponent. Wow. This game's been like three minutes. Um, if we, alright, so if we, if we cast Transfusion, uh, that does four damage to them, so I'd put them down to five. Um. I'm gonna say no. My axe is ready. Is it? Is it? That's the question I'm asking. Is your ass is your axe ready? <laughs> well, it's yeah, we never know what hit us. Said the wrong word there. Axe ready. My thoughts exactly. Little shark. You must be Lord Vladimir. All right, Vlad, go get him. I have my orders. Who would dance with me? Who's off? Did Vlad ever say who will dance with me? Timing is everything. I think that's what he said. I'm never gonna dance again. Guilty feet have got no rhythm. Um, put him down to three, which is fine. We'll oh, hopefully set up Noxion Fervor killing them. start here. I'm not going to use the Noxion Fervor immediately into all of this mana. Okay. Um, because basically four health they could, they could kill. Six health, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for them to kill six health. I think we're safe now. I'm not sure exactly what they're going to do to kill six health. Your taste is impeccable. Still think Freljord is the best version of those two decks that we just played against. I think, I think uh, Omen Hawk, Fury of the North. Way to go. And vomiting a. Okay, so we're going to we're gonna mulligan rekindler and hecarim, but I don't. All right, I don't mind those cards. So I like Glimpse Beyond because they usually play a good amount of removal, and we can respond with Glimpse Beyond, but. Maybe that's not what I'm supposed to keep. I 
I don't know who built this deck, to be honest. I did, I did not build this deck that we're playing. I'm not sure. I got it from Mobilytics, the just kind of browsing around the um, meta stats page. Like, you know, like on the meta stats, I kind of looked at, I was just looking at, uh, you know, like Noxus Shadow Isles and saw this combination and it, and, uh, it had a high win rate. It was before, it was before the last patch, so like, I just kind of went there right now, it's not on there right now, but. Uh, that's where, that's where I saw it originally. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know the answer to the question, the best deck against Vimer. I'm not 100% sure. Let me chat, said Demacia decks. Not 100% sure. Vimer's the kind of deck that when it has my, what are you doing, Harvey? My dog's just sharpening her claws on the carpet. Um am I glimpse beyonding this? To draw to? Probably not. Certainly slows me down. The the thing about Vimer, sorry, let me finish my thought. The thing about Vimer is it's a it's a kind of deck that that high rolls. The really, really good Heimer hands basically beat everything. But then there's also some really, really bad Vimer hands that everything beats it. And so I don't think there's really like a deck that beats Heimer's good hands consistently. I, I don't think there's really a deck that does that. You must teach me when you have time. I'll think about it. Yeah, like these elusives are, are really good. They like they are, especially this four three. I mean that's that's just a huge clock. Like I'm dead in two turns. Like there's no way I can kill them in two turns. Um and I'm gonna be dead in two turns. So this is looking horrible for us. No, Heimer with a, no, nothing is unbeatable. So no, I never, never think I say anything is unbeatable. So that's, that's not what I'm saying. But Vimer's top... 20%, you know, top 10%, top 20%, probably top 20%. Like, their top 20% hands are stronger than other decks' top 20% hands um, in general, like, over over the aggregate. All right, so I think I should mulligan Glimpse Beyond in this matchup for how this is played. I wish I would have mulligan to Glimpse Beyond. So, deck, if you have removal and go wide, like, is that... 
So you can do both of those things, and so you can, like, take out their elusives and also go wide. I don't know if that's always... I don't know if that's a realistic uh, goal. Well, Vengeance was a really good draw. Hopefully they don't have Deny. Well, that's too bad. Yeah, like, I, I like the, the Demacia Challenger decks. They usually do good against Vimer. Like, the matchup's, yeah, not not bad, but, you know, if they just have the 4-3 Elusive and can protect it, or, you know, Heimerdinger plus 2 or 3 Flash of Brilliance, they, you know, if they have, like, one of their really good hands, like, they, they're favored. Braum Swain. Am I keeping Cursed Keeper against Braum Swain? All of these are going... Yeah, we'll keep Cursed Keeper. Okay. It's a good start with Cursed Keeper into Demolitionist. Yeah, I... I mean, Shadow Isles is one of the weakest regions. I don't, I don't understand what... What you mean, Thorwolf? I mean, it's it's you know middle to weak. The two strongest regions right now are Freljord and Noxus. That card is way overplayed, by the way. And then probably Ionia after that. Those are, yeah, like those would be one, two, three. And then after that, probably Bilgewater. And then probably, maybe you're looking at like Shadow Isles or PNZ or Demacia. Looking at like those three kind of together there. For like four, five, six. And then what's the, what's the last region? Which one did I not mention? Love that trade. Remember the objectives. For the glory of Noxus. Brom is on the job. Alert the kitchen. We'll need more food. I mean, if you think Bilgewater only has Yoink, that's just not true at all. No, it has it has the deep stuff, it has the misfortune, uh, higher gun stuff, I became a soldier. and um, Twisted Fate's still probably the most underplayed card. I'd never keep my guests waiting. Or champion, I mean, not, not card, but champion. Good luck. Has so much card advantage, has so much removal. What was the region I didn't name? Did anybody say that? That's a good card, Ruination. That's a good card. No, I didn't... Bestow upon them the gifts of our empire. The few. No, because I said, I said, um, Freljord and Noxus are one and two. You know, which, whichever order you want to put those in. Maybe I said them all, and then. All right, so Freljord, Noxus one and two, and then Ionia three. And yeah, this this ruination is gonna be nice. Ionia three, Bilgewater four. Yeah, so I, I did say them all. So I said Bilgewater four, 
And then the last three are PNZ, Demacia, and Shadow Isles. So it's a good good sign. Like none of those other, those last three that I named, none of them are bad. So that's a good sign. Like they've done a great job balancing them. Like they're all uh, very well balanced. Yeah, probably P PNZ probably is the weakest region. It probably is. I mean, it does have good removal. And so it's a good... Um, uh, it's a good support region because of like the removal that you can just you know use PNZ for some support. To the this is the most overplayed card in the game right here, Kindly Tavern Keeper. What do you get me? Eh. Could be better. We each died, then found home. Let's play this first. How can Brom help? Ooh, tell the one about your door again. My life flickers. You are safe with Brom. I hope this kills Brom. Nope, not quite. Certainly, po certainly possible I should wait and <clears throat> just do that on defense. Five out of six for Vladimir. I think that with aggro, healing is important. Yes, I mean, healing is important against aggro, but I think it's also overrated. Strength I, I mean, I think Avaros and Trapper is a better card against aggro, a significantly better card against control and mid-range, but still even I think it's better against aggro than Kindly Tavern Keeper. Um, I mean, I think people just overrate gain three life. Basically, I I would rather have I would rather have I'd rather draw a one mana five five against aggro that lets me play that and still play like my other interaction and you know get a huge body to be able to block and be able to um, attack and pressure them a lot. I'd rather have that than three life. Hmm. Jinx at 4-4 would be really strong. Jinx at 4-4 would be really strong. Let's do this. We should get... So we'll get a Vladimir and then a... A Rekindler... Uh, a Rekindler that puts a Vladimir into play. So we have... We, have, we got a, another Vladimir that's not going anywhere. And all these Vladimir's are leveled up, so they all all drain, so we gain a whole bunch of life. That attack. Your taste is impeccable. Okay, yeah, you played two Kindly Tavern Keeper and three Everose and Trapper. Yeah, I mean that's 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 great. You know, you can definitely do that. I just see too many people playing Kindly Tavern Keeper instead of Averose and Trapper. But yeah, you can definitely play both of them. They're good three drops to have. T 
Teemo Vi. Crimson. Disciple. Crimson. Disciple. I wish I had the Jinx one. We'll still play this, so we'll play Cursed Keeper now. Then we have Vile Feast to this turn. For Teemo, next turn, the Awakener. Ooh, Puffcat Peddler is cool. Alright, see a spider. Healing is becoming increasingly important to deal with aggro, with Demolitionist, Crimson Disciple, Legion Grenadier being a lot of damage. That is true that there's a lot of damage. I just don't think that the healing is... I don't know, I just don't feel like the healing's good enough. But yeah, if, like playing Kindly Tavern Keeper alongside Averroes and Trapper, that's that sounds good to me. But I don't, I don't think that just like relying on Kindly, I don't know. I don't know if I'm making enough points, but... That's not all that you face, and that's that's the only matchup at all that Kindly Tavern Keeper could possibly be better than Averroes and Trapper. And I, I don't even think it's always better, like I was saying. There's going to be times where it'll be better for sure. Not denying that, but I think there's also going to be times that Averroes and Trapper would be better, but then Averroes and Trapper is just so much better against any kind of mid range or control deck. Just vastly superior that it, it doesn't really make any sense to play. Unless you specifically need to beat only Noxus and you just don't care about any other matchup. And you specifically need the card just there, but that just doesn't seem doesn't seem reasonable. No, patches are patches uh balance patches are the last week of the month. We just had a balance patch last week. We don't have one next week. They're always the last week of the month. So the next balance patch would be like the 28-29 of July. Your lesson begins. That's when they are. Okay, so this will level up Vladimir. Probably going to need to use Transfusion to keep Hecarim alive. One suffers. I know I have another Hecarim, and I have a Rekindler, but I still like... I think it's still good to use the keep the champions alive as long as you can, especially something as good as Hecarim. And obviously have the harrowing too. Like, I think it's just a good play. It gets that overwhelm damage in as well. No, I'm fairly confident that we're going to win this. I still uh, like our opponent's deck a lot. Tino's a lot of fun. I assume you've come for me. Remember the objectives. For the 
glory of Noxus. So honestly, the elusive to nerf. Y'all are kind of talking about like maybe an elusive could be nerfed. Okay, okay. I'm gonna let that happen. Dang, there they go. Probably the elusive to nerf and the best the best elusive is Shadow Assassin. It could make that a 2-1, kind of like Black Market Merchant. It could, like, it could be a 2-1. That would be... That would be a nerf that would also hurt. It's probably just not worth doing that. Let's go this way. That'd be a nerf that would also hurt uh, Vimer a little bit. Solitary Monk at 4-3 has also always seemed kind of silly to me. That could... Especially with... Hmm. Um, <clears throat> uh, sorry, especially with Navori Conspirator going down to a 2-2 instead of a 3-2. It's kind of seemed like since that, if Conspirator is a 2-2, Solitary Monk should be a 3-3, not a 4-3. So that's something you could do also. Well, that was a good turn. That was a really good turn for them. I am not... Oh, I guess... The, never mind, they're going down to two. One suffers, another rises. I was going to say I'm not as confident in winning this now, but... Uh, yeah, they were going down to two for transfusion. So, okay, yeah, the reason why I didn't transfusion to save Hecarim is because they're playing Dragon's Rage, and so the same reason why I didn't save the Vladimir really the turn before. Because Dragon's with Dragon's Rage being the removal spell, if I save Hecarim, Dragon's Rage would still recall it and still put it back into my hand. So I wouldn't really actually save the Hecarim. Um because they were casting this. Cause so like if if it would survive, then it still gets bounced. Um, so I'd be basically be using my transfusion to put Hecarim in my hand, and at that point, ex you know, with having another Hecarim already in hand and having the Harrowing in hand, I just don't need it. I just don't need a Hecarim in hand, and so that just wasn't a good use for the transfusion. Um, so same same thing of why I didn't save the Vladimir the turn before. Yeah, I think I think that's probably the mo the thing that makes a lot of sense is having Solitary Monk be a three three. With with how they've nerfed like the other elusive cards, it, that card should probably be a three three. That that makes a lot more sense than a four three. Um, I I could definitely see that being changed. Um, I think I I kind of like Greenglade Duo as it as is. It's very vulnerable. I think it's okay as is. You don't want like elusives to never be able to win a game. But I think the sol the solitary monk, its its size for mana cost doesn't make a ton of sense. All right, but anyway, that's Vladimir Hecarim. Um, you know, fun deck to play. Went three and two, lost to a couple of aggro decks, I think, right? Or no, we lost to Vi. He yeah, never mind. We lost to Vi Vimer in one aggro deck. Yeah, it's a fun deck to play. It's it's not like this isn't the strongest. Like you're not gonna have like an 80% win win percentage with this deck. I mean you're probably not gonna have an 80% win percentage with any deck, TBH, but 
Um, it, it's definitely competitive. You can win games for sure. You know, like like we showed there, going three and two, um, and it's just a fun one to play. So recommend it, especially um, like these two champions are they're definitely fun champions. Like I like Vladimir Hecarim. Uh, they hit hard. You get to attack for a bunch. You get some really flashy uh, turns in games with Harrowing. We kind of did that turn. My opponent conceded before I attacked, but the game four. Uh, we had the harrowing that put it gave us three Vladimir's, um, you know, each one, you know, drain, drain a bunch. The thing about this, though, actually, this is kind of weird. It says for each other attacking ally, and so it doesn't actually include Vladimir's. I just kind of thought about that. Like the Vladimir's don't. If you have two Vladimir's in play, the first one doesn't drain the second one because they it still count sees it as a Vladimir. So that's kind of weird. But hey, Togrek. All right, anyway, that's it here for Vladir Vladimir Hecarim. Those of y'all watching on YouTube, y'all know that drill. Hit that like button over there and leave those comments. Got any uh, comments about the gameplay, you know, questions, um, anything anything that we were talking about, you want to join in on the discussion, uh, you know, leave those comments over on YouTube and I'll respond over there. But anyway, thank you so much for watching some Vladimir Hecarim and I'll see you for the next video.